And the next thing we want to talk about is discerning both good and evil. And, and, and look how this will work for the next few minutes, and this will go pretty rapidly. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19 through 21, there Paul names off the works of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, railing, and such like. Now, I mean, you would look at those sins there and say, oh boy, you know, no. Ain't no way I'd touch that. No way I'd touch that. Well, he also lays out the works of the Spirit or the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, godliness or goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And against such there is no law, as he goes on to say. There is a law that condemns this left-handed side. But there is no law that condemns <clears throat> that right-hand side, only justifies it. It's just to love. It's just to have joy. It's just to have peace. It's just to be long-suffering, gentle, got a goodness, faith and meekness. And ten Here's what gets us in trouble is the middle man. How many times maybe we're guilty of telling <clears throat> a, a dirty joke? Had somebody come up to me one time and say, I'll tell you a joke. So now it's got a little dirty in it. I said, I don't want to hear it. I, I don't want to hear it. I've had people come up and say, well, I'll tell you this. Now it's got a little off color to it. If it's got a little off color to it, I don't want to hear it. Well, it... it this joke here, it just insinuates. Well, if it insinuates something and make me going to think evil, I don't want to hear it. Where would that, if we can discern both good and evil, where do you think dirty jokes hits at? Do you think it hits on the fruits of the Spirit? No. By no means does it hit there. Again, think about it. Which side would you? Handling bad talk, cussing. I could say it proper, say cursing, but I, we're from the Middle East. I like to say cussing. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? I was sitting on a riverbank with a fella fishing one time. He jerked his pole. I was there and child of God, though. But he was supposed to not have been. He gives a big jerk on his pole and his pole snapped. Now, I was standing up there, buddy, and when that did that, I heard some of the office talk there was, and I wheeled around, and I said, hey, wait a minute. I'm an iron Christian. I said, wait a minute. I said, are you supposed to talk like that? He said, it don't matter as long as you don't use God's name in vain. I wonder what Jesus meant when he said every idle word. You reckon that's just using God's name in vain? No. Where do you think that would fall at? Now, here, here's the idea to think about this. There is no middle ground. There's just no middle ground. It either, it's either going to fall in this category or it's going to fall in that category. It's like walking in the straight and R or the broad. There's no middle road. It's like being in the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. There's no middle place for you to be. So we have to think about that. What about gospel? Oh, now listen, gospel is really bad unless it's me doing the gospel. Now, for me doing the gospel, I'm just stating facts. <laughs> gossip is gossip. Sometimes we just need to be quiet. We just need not say nothing. I don't care how much truth is in it. We just need to be quiet. But all too many times that we're so anxious to tell somebody about somebody that told me about somebody. And you see, that's gossiping. Somebody will tell you something in confidence. And you say, oh, yeah, yeah. And you go to somebody else. Now, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I'm telling you this in confidence. Now, wait a minute. If you can't hold it in confidence, what makes you think they're going to hold it in confidence? Why would you ask them to do something you can't do yourself? 
You see, we get in trouble like that. Where do you think these are fallen? I would be hard pressed to say any of them belong to that right side. Any of them. Gamma. Where would it fall? Where would it fall? You know, you'd have a lot of people say, well, the Bible don't say nothing about gamma. As a matter of fact, we find in the book of Acts that they cast lots to see who would take Judas's place. Yeah, they did that. You know why they did that? It wasn't a gamma. It was to allow God to make the choice. Why did God have to make the choice? This person was going to take the place of an apostle uh, here, which Judas fell from. Somebody had to take his place, and he could only be chosen by God. Two men come up, they cast those lots, and God picked the man that he wanted, and that's what was there. So you think about it. Lottery. <coughs> People play the lottery. You got a lot of Christians that plays the lottery. It's gambling. It's gambling. I mean, you can say whatever you want to. It's gambling. You're going out here paying out your money to to do this. You know, when this first started in Kentucky, I, I heard on the news that this fella went out and took a mortgage against his house, and I think it was nine thousand dollars, if my mind serves me right, and went and bought nine thousand dollars worth of lottery, hoping that he'd hit the big one. Gambling is addictive. That's a proven fact. It's addictive. So you better be careful. Social drinking. Here's one that a lot of people like to hold to. They think it's all right to social drink. So I wonder what people would think about us if everybody, some stranger, walked into this building here and began to smell uh, Jack Daniels or old turkey all over every one of us' breath. I wonder what they go away and say, boy, that Lily congregation was so spiritual you could smell alcohol all over. And I don't know if they were shouting or they was just so drunk they couldn't stand up. Now that's, that's the ideal here. Now a lot of people like to look at drinking and saying just to sup here and yonder ain't going to make no... You try that with people and go get up in their face and try to... Talk to them about the Lord. Another thing here that could be bad. If you were going to town and the cop stopped you and he smelled alcohol on you, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to start questioning you and now you're going to be out here beside the road, traffic passing, and you're going to be doing this. Like this. You're going to be putting one foot in front of the other trying to stay. And you know, here would be my problem is I've lost my hearing in this side. When I stand on this foot, you can, you can see I'm not stable. I've got to grab to something. So the very minute I do that, what do you think he's going to do? Now I'm going to be taking the breathalyzer test, and here's all my brothers and sisters seeing me here doing all these tests. What are you going to think about me? He's been caught drinking. They think he's drunk. You see how much damage that could do to the body of Christ? I ain't going to work Lily. They ain't nothing but a bunch of drunks. You can't get around one of them to watch you can't smell liquor or beer or whatever. Think about that. Where do you think that would fall? Where do you think that would fall? Would it fall in all that over here, the fruits of the Spirit? I doubt it. Mick swimming. That's a problem. You got in modest dress women that's I'd say that uh, 96% undressed men 98% undressed My baby sister walked in the house one day and brother-in-law laying there on the couch and he had his shirt off and my sister was dressed in modest there's no question about that she had one little holder like tops on my brother-in-law raised up. So won't you go get you something on? She looked around at him. She said, "I've got more on than you got." And so, what's the point? What was the point? He was showing everything that, from here up, at least she did have some of that covered up. So you see, we make two standards here. We make two standards. Somebody I've had people to argue that. Well, when you're on the beach, this is modest. 
The Bible don't say that. The Bible's not teaching that. When Paul's teaching modesty, he's talking about clothes that, that are arranged and proper to be worn. In modest dress comes along with that. <coughs> Dancing and filthy movies. I've been argued in my lifetime, well, I didn't have nothing to do with making the movie. No, but you've got a knob on your TV or now a, a controller that you can switch it off. Why do you watch them? I'll tell you why you get watching them. What the first one said, you're making provisions for the lust of the flesh. You're making provisions to fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's what you're doing. All that here, dirty jokes, the cussing, the gospel, gambling, lottery, uh, social drinking, m mixed swimming, in modest dress, and dancing and filthy movie, you're making provisions for the flesh. That's not on the spirit side. That all has to do with the flesh, every bit of it. So we need to, if we're going to mortify, let's mortify, because I'll tell you this, if we don't mortify, then we certainly better be a dread in the days of the Lord because there's going to come a reckoning to all of us. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. Everyone is going to give an account of the things done in this life. Therefore, I need to discern what is good and what is evil. And I don't need to make provisions for the flesh by trying to meet it in the middle. I'm either with Christ and for Christ or I'm without Christ and against Christ. There's no middle ground for us to stand. So what about it? Are we mortifying the sins that we have in our life? Or are they multiplying? Instead of mortify, sometimes they just multiply. We best be careful in life because we don't know when this day is going to come. We don't know within the next minute whether we'll be alive or dead. We're only here by the grace of God. We're going to be saved by the grace of God, and God is going to take care of us. But we've got to, without a doubt, we've got to, to seek to mortify these things that are in, in our life that are wrong. Now, do we sin? Absolutely. We sin. That's why we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. The right. We have a way to take care of them. We just got to acknowledge them and we've got to repent of them. That's what we've got to do. We've got to try to mortify them out of our life. Now I know again that these are things that are easier said than done. It's not an easy thing. With the struggle of the flesh, it's, it's an everyday thing. It's an everyday thing that you got to be on your guard. But you know, Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor I'll forsake you. I'll go with you even to the ends of the world. We always have him at our right hand if we're striving to do what's right. He'll not leave us. If you're here and you're not a Christian, we want to encourage you to become one. Well, the thing that you need to have done is hear God's word, to believe it, to repent of your sins, confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, be buried with him in baptism, to raise, to walk in the newness of life. Once you raise raised in that life, live it faithful. If you've been a Christian and your life's not been according to what it should be, then the thing that you need to do is to repent of that, come forward, and let those of a spiritual mind pray with you and for you, and in true repentance, that sin is mortified. It's put to death. And if it's put to death, then it should be put out of the If you're here, please come as together we stand and sing.